If you pick 4 gig version of Raspberry Pi 4 and you want to saturate the memory, you probably have to send a 5 gig file to test the network. Yeah, I regret that now. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech and I'm putting my Raspberry Pi hat on because we're going to talk about Raspberry Pis. All of them to be precise. Well, all of them since Raspberry Pi 2. Today, the subject on today's video is uh, uh, Raspberry Pi and the network speeds. And unlike the last time, I'm not going to use ePerf uh, to test the network through output. I'm going to use some real life tests. And I was crazy enough to perform 154, yes, 154 separate tests, read and writes for three different file types. And I have a 300 megabyte of uh, file, a single file. This is done uh, because I needed something that will be smaller than the RAM of the smallest board, which is a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, I have uh, also equivalent in 300 uh, megabytes in files for the same reason. So I have a 50 files, 55 files worth of 300 megs. And also I have a five gigabyte zip file, mostly because I wanted to oversaturate the, um, the RAM on this board and keep the results consistent. Something that I really regret doing right now because, uh, well, I had to transfer this five uh, gigabyte file across even boards like this to have some great results. So that's what I'm going to do. If you're looking for synthetic benchmarks and stuff like that, just uh, stop watching right now. You're not going to find it. Why I did is I wrote the file to SSD and I read the file from SSD over the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm running a one gigabit network everywhere. So I have two routers, one is in here, one is downstairs. They're all uh, connected via CAT6 cables. It's granted um, one gigabit network I can get in excess of 900 uh, megabits uh, uh, per second on my local computers. So I know that that has been tested. I'm also using uh, SSD from PNY, something I purchased straight away for this test. Uh, it uh, claims the reads and writes up to 500 uh, megs. I was able to verify up to 300 or 270. Uh, so I know that's not going to be a bottleneck and I'm using USB uh, 3.0 for all my tests. Now in terms of testing of Wi-Fi, I'm going to use the same. I've got two routers, one's in here, which is uh, providing with, with five gigs um, band and one's downstairs, which is going to be providing with, with both five gigs and uh, 2.4 gigs band. And I've run these tests with the optimal uh, link quality. So I've, te I've checked uh, link quality using uh, uh, IW config, uh, so you can get uh, the strength of the signal, etc. It's been uh, superb, and I've kept the boards in the side of the um, router within about two meters while doing the tests. So, with all the technical aspects out of mind, let's take a look at our first contender. So, meet Raspberry Pi. Four. This is the latest and the greatest board from Raspberry Pi Foundation and it uses one gigabit Ethernet and also dual band uh, Wi-Fi. Now the results are as follows. As you can see the Ethernet uh, it's great. I was able to read and write files in excess of 100 megs per second so it's completely saturating my gigabit connection there and that was for smaller uh, transfers for a big transfer that was not using RAM uh, the transfer speed were about 90 uh, both ways for read and write. So that's a superb result and I'm looking forward to run an ASPI with this board. Um, I've also tested USB um, connection uh, over the internet. So I had an adapter, a USB uh, 3 adapter to Ethernet, and I've tested this as well as you can see it. And uh, while USB types, sorry, USB 3.0 connections was tiny, a tiny little bit slower, I think it's approved that both are on the same bus. And USB uh, 2.0 was uh, delivering speeds up to 300. Uh, megs per second, which is what you would expect from the board like Raspberry Pi 3B+. Now what was really disappointing was the uh, Wi-Fi performance. So I had no really issues with the 5 uh, GHz band, 2.4 GHz bands were struggling 
and you could uh, really really see that when the writing the files which the speeds were about three to six uh, megs only. I hope that's going to be the same case as it used to be with the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus where over the time the driver uh, drivers were worked on and much improved. So that's the performance from the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's move to the older board which is Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. With release of the Raspberry Pi 4 we also got the new version of Raspbian based on Buster and what a name is that is basically me on this picture, well, underneath it. Anyway, back to the results. Uh, with this board, we have improved Ethernet that uh, has a bigger share of the bus and is capable of uh, transmitting, in theory, up to 300 uh, megs per second. In practice, it looks slightly different. As you can see on attached um, graph, the Ethernet performance was up to 20 megs, which is respectable and something I've seen previously after upgrading my NAS into this board. And um, that same goes for USB Type 2, uh, USB 2.0, which the speeds were slightly smaller. And proceeding to Wi Fi, you could see a fairly decent Wi Fi performance over 5G and um, average over the 2.4 network. I would expect the uh, drivers to be a little bit better for this, but uh, well, uh, let's, let's say it's I'm gonna blame the overhead for this. So, those are the network speeds for the Raspberry Pi 3B. Plus. And uh, overall, it's a decent board and uh, you can still take advantage of increased boss of the Ethernet itself. Moving on, we have Raspberry Pi 3A+, Plus, a smaller sibling. It basically has been stripped from the Ethernet, so you no longer have a built-in Ethernet, but you uh, still have the same Wi-Fi chip. So, uh, in order to give you some Ethernet results, I've used the USB here over the hub. Uh, to connect the drive and connect the uh, internet so you could get some readings on it. Now, uh, I've used this board for my Raspberry Pi a music streamer for Amazon, so if you're interested in that, you can click on the video there uh, to, to have more details about the project. As per the speed results, there are as follows. The Ethernet performance over the USB is decent, so you can get up to 17, really. Um, that's the average of transfer speed. Uh, and uh, over the Wi-Fi you have a fairly decent 5G network which you can get in excess of 10 um, megabits per second, megabytes per second, sorry. And uh, the worth noting is the Wi-Fi on this uh, actual board is uh, I think slightly a little bit stronger than on the bigger sibling. sibling so I'm not 100% sure why is that, but uh, yeah. Um, lastly, I, I had really bad results for the Wi-Fi over the USB and I think I'm gonna blame the USB itself because it was shared over the hub. You only have one USB uh, slot in here so I used the powered hub in order to uh, connect my USB adapter and the drive over the single USB so I guess that's why I had such a big overhead on the rights. For a long time Raspberry Pi 3B has been the staple of all the projects. Raspberry Pi 3B came finally with Wi-Fi and we were able to use 2.4 gigabit uh, band, a uh, gigahertz, sorry, band uh, to transfer the files back and forth over the internet as well as using the um, um, 100 uh, megabit connection uh, to um, transfer the files over the Ethernet. Now, the performance of the board network was, was really solid, I'd say, in the terms of Ethernet. I was using uh, this for my Node-RED server for a really long time, as you can see. You can get in excess of 10 in terms of a transfer, which is fairly consistent no matter what you throw at it. Uh, now, slightly higher, taking advantage of the bigger boss uh, associated with the USB um, 2.0 were transfers over the uh, Ethernet connected to USB. So I was able to get in excess of 14 to 15 megabytes per second. Now the Wi-Fi on, its, uh, on this is, it was really, really consistent. And I think the community had such a long time to work on all the bugs and everything and report everything that it got to the point when the write and read speeds on this board were really, really consistent as you can see on the chart. Uh, however, again, with the uh, USB adapter, I was able to top that. I think this is because mainly the um, bigger throw output through the USB rather than the built-in adapter. That's my theory behind it. I don't know. Uh, I've checked the data twice on this graph because I was a little bit surprised, but that's the way it is. 
a Raspberry Pi 2. It's been this is the original board I've used uh, for my NAS uh, NAS Pi build. As you can see, it's uh, it's not missing USB, but it has a modified socket for it, so you I could accommodate um, the cables internally. You can read about this project a little bit more in here. Now, this board itself doesn't have a um, Wi-Fi. You could use Wi-Fi over USB, which you can see on the graph itself. But it has a very strong performance in terms of uh, consistency via Ethernet. So you could see the transfer speeds around 10, regardless, uh, no matter what you throw with this. And also slightly increased performance over the USB. So if you connect that USB Ethernet, you would get slightly faster Ethernet performance. Since there is no Wi-Fi, uh, there is no other way than test it over the USB. And as again, uh, a little bit of surprise here to see the write speeds actually being uh, faster than the read speeds. So I was scratching my head, but I've repeated the test twice and both times came back the same. So I assume either it's um, something specific to the board or I don't know, but that's the test I've got with this board. In my hands, I have a Zero W. Uh, this is a Raspberry, uh, one of the Raspberry small boards, and I was using this as a VPN server at my home. So when I was traveling in China, I would use this board to connect to my internet and bypass China's restrictions. Now, it's not amazing in terms of performance, but since the Ethernet USB speeds were up to 8 and fairly consistent, that was pretty much the maximum at that time I had in terms of upload speed and that would be my cap. So having a uh, having a board like that was ideal because it was cheap and I was uh, cheap and I was able to get maximum use out of it. So uh, looking at the Ethernet USB, you can see uh, speeds are very consistent at eight uh, megabytes per second, uh, right slightly slower, and then you have uh, over the um, built-in Wi-Fi actually being weaker than the Wi-Fi over USB, which was something interesting. Now, I've run the USB uh, Wi-Fi over the powered hub, which means uh, the device didn't have to supply as much power to USB, and maybe that was the reason why I had a higher transfer speeds on this board. And lastly, I've got my uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, and that board is uh, pretty much offline, doesn't have Ethernet, doesn't have a Wi-Fi, so everything that you connect to it has to go through pretty much a single USB port uh, to get this board online. So I was able to connect USB uh, 2.0 Ethernet uh, adapter and uh, a Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz uh, um, adapter as well to measure the speeds and as you can see fairly consistent speeds over the Ethernet something you could use and the same story very similar to um, Raspberry Pi Zero W where um, USB uh, Wi-Fi was performing quite well uh, personally I've been using this board um, well it goes everywhere with me because uh, I've made it into a USB stick and I may I'm able to program it on the go if you are interested in how I did that and how to create your own portable uh, Raspberry Pi that you can program you can click on this link and learn more since I've got so much data on my hands I prepared another three graphs for you showcasing uh, the read and write performance across all the boards so you could see what is the best option for you what's the best interface and obviously if you're not uh, if you if you're not planning on buying Raspberry Pi for just yet uh, then it's gonna be a couple of options you can pick from so here's the read and write for 5 gig file so this is a big file uh, it's gonna take some time to transfer and those are expected speeds across different interfaces Now, if you're interested in a smaller file, something that's going to be within the RAM size of your board, uh, the speeds will increase and suddenly you're going to have much bigger choices in terms of Raspberry Pi boards you could use for your projects. And then the last graph uh, showcasing you the 55 uh, pictures that's been uh, transferred over the internet into the boards so it's a bit of a, a cooperation between CPU and disk write speeds and everything to kind of get it done so that's how the boards were performing across different network interfaces so guys this is what to expect from the new version of Raspbian and new Raspberry Pi boards I hope the Raspberry Pi 4 will get its um, Wi-Fi together and start performing really really well. Now if you've got any questions leave them in a uh, comment section below or just follow me on social media to get the updates 
about uh, different articles. Now, if you're interested in more details, the write-up about the speeds, there is also an article in the description of this video. So, thanks for watching, guys, and see you later in the next video. Take care. Bye. And I was using this board specifically as my VPN, mostly because the oh, <laughs> God damn it! This is not enough tech. As you can see, the Raspberry Hat Pi is Ra Raspberry Hat Pi. This is a hat. Oh, <laughs>